What's up guys, David here from Dignited. Today I want to show you how to test and fix some network connection issues that you might experience on your Roku TV. Alright, let's get into it. A network test will test your existing network connection and check if there are better networks available. To test your network connection on your Roku device, go to settings and then network and then check connection. As you can see from my Roku Streaming Stick Plus, the network connection test was successful. The result shows the connection status, connection type, that is if it is Wi-Fi or Ethernet, the signal strength and wireless channel for the case of wireless networks, IP, gateway and MAC addresses, and then the internet download speed. You mostly want to pay attention to signal strength and internet download speed. A good signal strength ensures you have good Wi-Fi connection, but not necessarily fast internet speeds. To have a good signal strength score, make sure your Roku Smart TV or streaming player is as close to your Wi-Fi router as possible. If you can get your Roku device and Wi-Fi router in the same room, then the better. A distance of 10 meters or 30 feet without obstacles is really ideal. The less the distance, the better of course. Personally, I try to place my Wi-Fi router in the center of the living room. This allows for equal distribution of your wireless signal. If your router is in the corner of the room, then half the Wi-Fi signal may be outside. So the location of your Wi-Fi router determines the quality of wireless signal strength that your Roku device gets. I also try to keep my Wi-Fi router away from household devices such as cordless phones or microwaves or Bluetooth speakers or Wi-Fi cameras. These devices share the same frequency band with the router and therefore emit interference which reduces the wireless signal. Because Bluetooth devices use the 2.4 GHz frequency band, you may want to connect your Roku TV to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band. This requires a dual band Wi-Fi router that supports both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. It's best to set up your dual band Wi-Fi router with two separate SSIDs for the 2.4 gigahertz band and 5 gigahertz band. Right, I did a video on how you can force your smartphone on the 5 gigahertz band, but this should also apply to your Roku TV as well. All right, now please note that some older Roku streaming players only support the 2.4 gigahertz band. For instance, the Roku Express and Express Plus, that is the one prior to the new Express 4K, and the Premier and Premier Plus are lower end units that come with single band Wi Fi radios that support only the 2.4 gigahertz band. In fact, they can't even see the 5 gigahertz band, let alone connect to it. All right, that said, if you have one of these models and a dual band Wi-Fi router with both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands, make sure that the router's 2.4 gigahertz band is turned on. While you use the 2.4 gigahertz band, you can choose to select non-overlapping wireless Wi-Fi channels. All right, now you can think of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequency bands as two highways. The Wi-Fi channels are like lanes on these highways. So if you want to pick the fastest lanes on either highway, you naturally would want to choose the ones that are less crowded. On the 5 gigahertz band, there are 24 non-overlapping channels, while for the 2.4 gigahertz band, channels 1, 6, and 11 are the best choices because they don't overlap each other. You can set your Wi-Fi router to use any of these channels in the settings of your router. All right, if you can't get a good Wi-Fi strength for whatever reason, then consider connecting your Roku TV to an Ethernet network instead. Wired Ethernet isn't prone to interference or obstacles such as walls or floors. Some Roku Smart TVs come with an Ethernet port, so you can take advantage of that. However, most Roku streaming devices don't. You will have to use an Ethernet adapter for that. I already did a video on how you can connect your Roku device to a wired Ethernet connection and I recommend you watch it first. 
All right, getting a good or excellent signal strength core is a good start, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee the best performance. The real litmus test is the internet download speed score. All right, the recommended internet speed for streaming high definition or HD content at 720p is about 3 Mbps, and for full high definition or FHD content at 1080p is about 5 Mbps. If you're streaming 4K Ultra HD content, then you should have about 15 Mbps internet speeds. Getting a fast internet plan from your ISP or internet service provider is a good start. You have to make sure that you're getting the promised internet speeds. You can use speed testing sites such as fast.com or speedtest.net to check if you're getting what you really paid for. Also, make sure that your ISP isn't throttling certain streaming services. This is rare, but some ISPs sometimes limit internet speeds for certain internet services. All right, if you're also connecting to a VPN or virtual private network, make sure that you're using a paid VPN service provider. Connecting your Roku TV to any VPN will reduce the internet speed. The magnitude really depends on your service provider. The best VPNs will reduce your connection speeds by 10 to 20 percent while poor VPNs will reduce your speeds by more than 50 percent. I personally use ExpressVPN and sometimes Surfshark and my speeds drop by 15% from what my ISP promises me, which isn't really that bad. All right, if your Roku TV can't connect to the internet at all, try any of these options. Make sure your Wi-Fi router is getting the internet. Just because your Roku device is connected to the Wi-Fi does not mean there is an internet connection. The easiest way to test if your Wi-Fi router has internet is to test if your other devices are picking the internet. Sometimes your internet provider may be having an outage in which case you will want to contact their support. Another thing that you can do is to restart your Wi-Fi router even if other devices have no problem finding and connecting to it. Sometimes that's all that it takes. All right, another thing you can do is try to restart your Roku device. Restarting the Roku will clear its memory and you can do that via settings and then system and then system restart. You can also just power circle it by simply unplugging it from the main supply or from your TV's USB port. All right, if that doesn't fix it, then try to reset your network connections. To reset your network connections, go to settings, and then system and then select advanced system settings and then select network connection reset. Now reconnect your Roku device to the Wi-Fi via settings, network and then set up connection. Re-enter your Wi-Fi password and reconnect to your Wi-Fi network. All right, if all fails, try to reset your Roku device to factory settings. To do that, go to settings and then system and then advanced system settings and then factory reset all right some roku streaming players have a physical reset button so you can simply press it to reset your roku device you can now try to set up your roku device as though it were new you can watch our video on how to set up a roku device all right guys that's how you can test and fix network connection issues on your roku tv if you found this video helpful give us a like subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on future videos otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one